Okay, hi everyone. My name is Gigi. I'm from Bangkok, Thailand, not Taiwan. And I'm so excited to be here. Uh, first of all, uh, we I own the around the civic tech in Thailand that's called Vibis. It's a quite young, more younger than my society or Lin C V just five years old. And uh that's we stands for we visualize data for democracy. Today I'm pleased to tell you about our journey. That's why we create this kind of tool. Maybe it's a simple thing in UK or in other country, but not in mine. So we are the the one who pioneered this. And also maybe I'll, I wanna give uh, some some learnings that maybe you can use it with your projects. So for you who have no idea about politics of Thailand, let me give you some background about that and why we need to exist. Thailand, I think in, in brief, Thailand is a country with 13 times of who within 88 years of our democracy. And mostly we are governed by the military government. And if you enter in the room that has uh, 10 of Thai people, only one person know about civic tech, which makes me sad. <laughs> but uh, in the past five years, I also have no idea about so civic tech as well. I was the journalist before, but I have a chance to meet with the, the, the guys who work on the data and technology. That's why this happened. And uh, during uh, the election, uh, I mean, the last coup took place in 2014. And the coup said that's going to be the election in 2019. And we think that's gonna not going to be the free and fair election because all the rules and the regulations set by the coup. So we as a new water, young water, gather together and ask ourselves, what, what can we do? And because we are uh, designers, journalists, developers, researchers, and students, we think we as a normal citizen have not much resource but we have a skills that we can do something. So we developed the first website. It's not a, about the parliament monitoring, but it's about the website that provide information relating to politics and election to the voters. Because in the past, when we are under the coup, we have no right to ask the question about the politics. We have uh, no right to information that uh, uh, the, what the government did in that era. So we want we didn't want to go back to that dark era again. So we we try to acquire all relevant information. With uh, sometimes we need to be a white hacker to get it and then provide to the voters. We just aim that uh, we can create more constructive conversation or even a debate in our society before the election and get all the voters well informed to make the decision on the election day. Uh, Surprising to us because it's a new new website, but over 20 million of users access our website at that time. 20 million uh, means one third of our population. So I think it's new and it's kind of rebel action that took place at that time. So right now we are proud of that. And after the election, we ask ourselves again, what else can we do? Uh, at that time, we, we have not many resources or not many experiences, but actually thanks for my society because we do some brainstorm and did some research and we found uh, they work for you and got track in the U.S. that inspired us that we need to protect our world after the election. And after we announced on our social media, a lot of volunteers uh, want to do that as well. So we gather together and uh, create this kind of platform that is called They Work For Us. Sorry for the name, but we have a short time to think about that. And with uh, the contribution of the volunteers that came around from the country, we can create this website for less than one year. So it's quite hard. It's not, I think it's not a magic, but it's a hard work behind that. And especially the young water, it means the symbol of hope because they can take part in some political actions apart from going forward. And after this platform get launched, a uh, more question about the parliamentary activity uh, start come to us. So we, we try to think about what other civic tech can do, our kind of tech group can do for the press, for the voter. So we create the other platform that called Law Watch to monitor the legislative process in our parliament to track what it to get proposed to the parliament and what it to pass by the MP. 
And the last platform that related to parliament activity, we develop a year later is uh, we call it Promise Tracker. We also learn from other countries, especially I think in, in South Africa, that they got a lot of this kind of platform to track how the policy get delivered to the people via the legislative process. And I think this kind of platform is not just the website, but we get a massive recognition because we set a new standard to our politics that people can monitor, can investigate, can ask the question and find some answer with this kind of uh, information. Mm, during the, high, the last general election, we got a contact from a lot of press, a lot of voters, a lot of academics and also the political parties that they are interested in our database. So after the election, we, we decided to do something and we merged all the platform that related to parliament activity into one-stop service that's called Parliament Watch. I think I share the same idea as Lindsay said that I think somebody would have done this, but no one in our country have done it. So, um, okay, it's, uh, it's our willing to do it. So again, we gather all volunteers who are interested in this issue and in now developing this platform, which is just launched last month, which is one year after the last general election. And in this platform is, I think it's a simple feature, but it allow people to get to the information about the parliament. It shows the MP profile, what have they done before becoming the politician. It shows the voting record, uh, how they vote in the parliament. You, and it's also uh, show the bill process because it's just like, a, we imagine it's like when we do the delivery service, you can see which process they are in. So we developed something like that. And the last thing we show the policy tracker to, to track our government if they can complete what they said during the political campaign. But uh, as I said, uh, it's not just like creating the website, but uh, in our political context, we need to done a lot of hard work to prove that this kind of platform work in our society. First of all, uh, we have a problem with the uh, rise to information in our society because our information act is not a freedom of information act. It's called official information act. That means the power is in the hand of the officials to give or not to give the information to the people like us. So, but we try to apply this act to the parliament to get the information. But in the meantime, we also advocate for the amendment of the act to change it into the concept of freedom of information. And good news, it might be success this year. And the second thing, I think we got to face the challenge about how we gather information because uh, every, almost every information in Thailand is a paper-based document. And when you get uh, things from your parliament, it's just like this, it's uh, in the CD which I has a problem because my laptop has no CD player. <laughs> yeah, and this one is a voting record in Thailand. They use the handwritten paper. That's why we need to do, develop their, the OCR tools to turn these kind of things into the machine readable format to display on the website. That means uh, if we don't develop uh, the platform that call Parliament Watch, it's, it's a burden to the press, to the people to track what their representative do in the parliament. So I think we we work on these things. And the second thing is, is because the civic tech uh, has no position, has no ecosystem in our country. It has to clarify why we exist and we rarely get the support, even from the parliament, even from uh, other funders in our country because it's quite a new idea in our society. So we need to show them why the things that we try to do is, is important to the society. So we now work, not only create a database, what we try to work with other stakeholders like press and a policy think tank to make it more impactful. 
For example, we cannot show only the voting records, but during the election, we try to create a like a Tinder, the matchmaker that try to compare your opinion with your MP voting. That means you, we can check if we share the same direction or ideology in the same issue. And this one is a policy think tank, one policy think tank used our database to uh, develop the evidence-based policy and propose to the government. That's uh, this kind of thing that we try to work with them, uh, kind of prove that why we exist, why we should exist in our society. And not only that we try to create a participation on our database, but we try to uh, keep our stakeholders relevant to our work. So we not work only with the press or policy think tank, but we try to work with the parliament itself and also the political party. We are actually non-partisan, but uh, when we create a kind of promise tracker, we open the room for the all political parties to contribute the information to us if we miss something. But we have the audit team, the editorial team to recheck it and recheck it also with the people that if, if we display this kind of information, I agree with that. And because maybe because we've created a website that that people expect that it should be shown on the government, uh, parliament website. So the parliament invite us to join, uh, it's called Open Parliament Committee. It's not for creating the website for the parliament, but uh, help them to improve how they should open the data about their parliament. So I think it's a good sign for us, not just a traffic that go into our website, but we can change the way they work for a long time to be more open to the people. And the last thing we, we try to join the PMO networks because actually we are young and we have no experience, no knowledge how to develop or further maintain this kind of platform. So we have our network in Southeast Asia, which has not much organization in, but uh, we also joined TikTok to file other PMO to help us uh, think about how to maintain this kind of platform in the long term. So that's the reason why I'm here. I'm not just sharing what we have done, but as for your feedback, as for your help, or maybe consulting, or any knowledge that can contribute to our platform, our website, our project. And right now, uh, in Southeast Asia, we try to make our political database comply to international international standard because we have uh, some kind of cross-border issue that care about the democratic threat. So right now we are working on that. And since we, we are not a non-commercial organization, we open all our projects uh, as an open source. So you can go to our GitHub, send some feedback or comment on that as well. And in summarize, I think uh, that's why we wish happen and exist because I think politics is too important to be left only in the hand of politicians. And we don't want to go back to the era that we cannot uh, express our political expression. We we want to have the right to know, want to have to write, don't want to have the right to ask the question. So it just it's not just a website, it's not, not just a project, but I think it's a hope, especially for the young generation who want to live in our country to do something that we can. So if you have any ideas, more ideas or suggestion, you can stay in touch with us. We wish and we appreciate uh, all your feedback. Thank you.